goodness. Oh, that's so sad. That is so crazy. Oh, yeah. My it's sad, but honestly, to me, I feel like it's a ble- just to me, just my opinion. I yeah. feel like it's been a blessing to me just because I felt like I knew everything at one point, and then I'm like, I don't know shit. <laughs> like, I don't know anything about life. Like, it's kind of humbling. You know what I'm saying? And- yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Mute it, mute it. A mute, what, what? Oh. oh, there it goes. Oh. Okay, it was, a, it was okay. muted. Say it again, please. Okay. I was receiving a call, sorry. <laughs> I oh, should have told like, them. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, oh, no, I was just saying that I feel that it was a blessing to me to be diagnosed at such a young age because I feel like at that point, you know, you're still coming out of a teenage years, like from, 20, from 19 to 20, and I was actually diagnosed in November. My birthday's in October. Oh, crap. There we go. Sorry, same person <laughs> calling me. Um, but I yeah, so I, I know, right? I'm on an important call, guys. Don't call me. But yeah, so so I was 20 and I had just, you know, kind of gotten out of my teens. I've gone out of my teens. So I was like, I thought I knew everything. I thought I had everything under control. I had life figured out and I didn't have anything figured out. So I'm glad that I realized that at a young age. Into So I've had this, of course, we both had it since the, our entire adulthood. So mm-hmm. it's kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? People talk about aging with MS, and it's, like, super scary. But at the same time, you can't look too much into it. Why? I, I feel like I can't look too much into it because you never know what tomorrow holds. Like, it could be great, and, it can, you know, it doesn't matter if you have MS or not. Like, you, you can't predict the future. So, you know. I do feel that way, too. Like, in some parts, it's a blessing, but it took me years to think of it like that. Um, I was, uh, you said, mine was kind of the same thing where my birthday was in May. Oh. And then at the end of my birthday, so June, the first week of June is when I got into the hospital. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it was kind of like I experienced the symptoms. Like, sh- should we just, I-, I just want to share my story. <laughs> is that okay? Go ahead. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Um, in April of 2010, I was experiencing the symptoms where um, the right side of my mouth was numb. Mm-hmm. And then I had an ear infection. Mm-hmm. And I never had an ear infection before and then the third part was when my right arm and my right leg would just go numb like they would just dip so that's when I was like something's wrong and I never had this and I would tell my parents and um I'm black by the way so my parents (laughs) I don't know if you can tell but like my parents did have they had no idea what was going on and they just Oh, be careful. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to, it's because my phone's dying, so I'm trying to plug oh, it up. Oh, charge that. Yeah. <laughs> but go ahead. Go, ahead. <laughs> go my, ahead. I tried to tell my parents about the symptoms, and luckily my grandmother, who's an RN, was like, girl, oh, you need nice. to go to the hospital. Like, you need to go to the doctor. And my parents were just like, you should pray on it. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what does that do for me? <laughs> So that's, <laughs> legit, that's it does I, miracles. <laughs> so much miracles. So that's why I just I, I was, let me just preface. First of all, I'm black, so that's what my black parents told me to do. And um, so I admitted myself into the ER. I drove myself with my numbing oh, arm. Oh my leg. god! Yeah, because I, wow. I, I, I went to my pediatric, and I was like, pediatrician. Okay. I was like, right. I don't know what this is, and he's like, girl you need to go to the ER and you shouldn't drive yourself. I was like, okay. And I just drove myself to the ER. (laughs) 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 What's the difference between driving myself to his office and to the ER? So, (laughs) Look, sir, I've got here so far. So let me do it. (laughs) I got it. I just just called my parents. I was like, hey, I'll meet y'all on the way to the hospital. And they're like, okay. So yeah, when I got there, um, being a young 20 something and we're women of color. Cause you, by the way, you looking pretty, like you look great and you look wonderful. Oh, thank That's you. Gorgeous. So do you. Thank you. First of all, you're really pretty. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, you, so are you. Thank you. Look I look terrible with my eyebrows, but <laughs> um, uh, mine too. You just can't see them, but yeah, they're in there. <laughs> oh no, we're going to do a call right now. And I got, I got to flip up my hair. Um, when I got to the hospital, I had to make the doctor, I'm sorry, I had to make the symptom happen because the doctor didn't believe me. 
Oh, and wow. I was like, yeah, because he was like, I don't, he really like legit was just like, I don't believe you. And I'm like, I had to make the numbingness happen. So, wow. Yeah, I know. That That's is what, crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, I'd never been to the hospital prior to this. I, I had a good clean bill of health usually. So, um, except for like. So did I. Yeah, except for like, for me, childhood uh, asthma and bronchitis. That's right. it. I never went to the hospital. So. Same here. Yeah. So when I got admitted to the hospital, I don't know if, if this happened to you, but they put me on the stroke floor, like the stroke ward. Wow. Mm -mm. Yeah. I don't even know what that is. This is how what they is took that? care of me. Um, so <laughs> they put me on the floor where there was like 70 plus year old people that suffered a stroke because that's what they thought I was having. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Okay. So I stayed in the hospital for three days and they were testing me and, um, we're women. So I had my period during that time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they were testing me. They're testing my urine. They were testing my blood and they came back to me one day and they were like, um, so ma'am, there's blood in your urine. I'm like, I'm on my period. Like, <laughs> <laughs> No splash, people. <laughs> Just, I'm not pregnant. Like, what's going on? So, and they asked me that. They tested me for pregnancy. They tested me for AIDS. They tested me for HIV. They tested wow. me for everything. Yeah, it was, wow. I was like, this is low-key racist. Like, and they were asking wow. me, they were asking me questions like, are you sexually active in front of my parents? Which, for the record, I wasn't. I didn't have sex yet, <laughs> but cheers to that. <laughs> I was, I was like, look, I am a good girl. I'm not nothing. I mean, that's not to say that sex didn't happen right after that, because I bitch thought she was dying. Like, <laughs> I legit because all of that to say they didn't tell me right away that this was MS. No one knew what it was, and I thought I kind of was gonna be disabled and whatever for the rest of my life so so i know that's how i ended up like well yolo let's <laughs> let's right <laughs> i'm not gonna have control of my limbs let me at least know what sex feels like so <laughs> <let's do that. laughs> yeah. they told me like two couple weeks later they're like what well you know it's ms and the way that they told me was very not uh sensitive they just me and my mom went to the doctor and they were like, oh yeah, uh, we figured it out. It's not lupus, it's MS. Okay, $50. And I was like, what's MS? Wow. What is that? I don't know anyone that has MS. My parents don't have it. I don't know what it is. What, so then um, luckily I have a cousin who had a neurologist who she directed me to. And he told me straight up, oh, so um, multiple sclerosis is common for african-american women between the ages of 20 and 50 and i was like so a bitch ain't had no chance like i literally could have had, <laughs> for real, had no chance at all <laughs> there was no space for me to not contract this i literally just hit 20 yeah so th that's what he said so then i was like so what are we gonna do <laughs> and that's when and i'll go into the medications i had like after you like what's your story so okay so for me i'm mexican <laughs> La latina Hola, so, <laughs> muy bien, yay. yeah so so cheers again mm. Mm. by the way my, so, my grandmother's from costa rica i don't know spanish awesome. but i got some latina awesome <laughs> awesome. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, okay. So I started with um, optoconeuritis. I didn't know what it was at the time, Ooh. but I just woke up one day, started seeing blurry from one eye, but I was like, mm, I don't know. You know, same like you. I never had any other, you know, conditions, like, you know, nothing crucial, like just a cold or the flu or whatever when I was growing up, but that's it. Mm -hmm. And so then um, I told my mom, I was like, hey, mom, um, I. 
can't see very well out of one eye. She, oh, it's pro okay. So Mexican moms are like, well, for me, it's like it's air. It's air in your eye. Like I don't even know if that could happen, right? But I was told as a kid that you get air in your eye, right? So she's like, it's air in your eye. It's probably air in your eye. Don't worry about it. And so I was like, okay. So I let, let a days go by, right? And so I was negligent. Like I just, I was like, okay, well, fine. It probably passed. Girl, by the time I knew, like three days went by and my eye, if I closed this eye, this eye was pitch black. <gasps> I couldn't see anything. Yes. Oh I was so God. scared. And so then, <laughs> so then I went to the Walmart eye doctor. I just scheduled an appointment. You know, I didn't know what to do. I just went to this to the Walmart eye doctor and he, she was like she was like okay well she checked me out whatever and she was like well this is uh near this is a little higher than my pay grade so I'm gonna send you over to an ophthalmologist at Presbyterian Hospital if anyone knows Dallas but either way so I'm from Dallas I'm from Texas by the way I don't know where, hey. you're, where are you from yeah I'm from Jersey <laughs> I was, oh, I was shirt. cool. I'm, I'm wearing my, <laughs> I'm wearing a Jersey shirt, born and raised. Oh, okay, Jersey. cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, cool. I was born and raised in Texas soon. Yay. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so then she sent me that same day. For me, it was crazy. It was one day. It was the same. Okay. So then that happens. I go, I go to the eye doctor. She tells me, hey, I'm going to send you over to uh, Presbyterian Hospital and he'll be waiting for you. He's, you know, she did the referral thing real quick, which was really awesome. And so then, um, and so then she sends me to the ophthalmologist at Presby. I go and uh, he gets me in really quick, by the way, like freaking nice. less than five minutes. Yeah, it was pretty cool. But then um, I was, so I go in and then he does this little sprays, the little whatever in your eye, you know, to dilate the oh. eye. He yeah. sprays it and does his little test, and not even 10 minutes later, he comes back and says, well, you know, this is, seems neurological. This is the second time in my 20-year practice. Girl, he scared the crap out of me. He said, in my 20-year practice, this is the second case I've seen like yours, oh. but I'm going to send you to the neurologist here, and um, he can see you now. So, boom. It was like boom, boom, boom for me, and so then... Um, so I go, he's like, he'll be waiting for you. So you could go across the street. His his office was across the street, same hospital, Presby, but they had a, a, an office across the street. And so then I go again, five minutes in the waiting room, and then I go in. People are looking at me crazy because I just got there and they're like, I've been waiting here. You know? uh, and so I'm like, you know, I felt bad, but I was like, like I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> right? And so then um, – so then I go in and he's like, well, so he starts doing his little test, like the little finger and like do it, tapping my knee and mm. the little test that they do walk in a line and stuff like that. Right. The visual test they do. And so he starts doing that. And then he's like, well, I'm going to send you to get an MRI. And by the way, he had a little MRI set up, right. Cause he, he was in the hospital. He was okay. in the hospital. So then he had like a little MRI set up room, which was super weird to me anyway. <laughs> and so then, uh, so he sends me over. I come back, I go into the consultation again to the room, and he's like, well, I think it's MS. Just like that, like, again, very nonchalantly, like the way they did you. And mm. it's like, I think it's multiple sclerosis. I never heard the word. Well, I had heard the word, but I forgot about it because I never, I didn't know anything about it either. No one in my family's had it either, none of that. So then I'm like, well, okay, so what is it? And he's like, well, it attacked, um, he started explaining it to me, and I forgot how he explained it, but what I correlated it with is, you know, whenever the people with, um, and it's a different, it's a different condition, but you know how they play basketball in their wheelchairs, and they can't even hold their head up, I think it's like a ALS or something that they have? I think so, so it might be a thing, so, yeah. So that's what I seen in my head, right? When he was explaining it, I saw like, well, then I'm going to lose control of everything because that's what he explained it as. Like uh -huh. you could lose control of your arms, your legs, you can lose control of everything. So that's kind of how he explained it because he tried to dumb it down for me because I didn't know anything, you know. And so then um, I was like, well, okay. And then I was like, well, can I die? You know, like that was my first question. Like, will I die from it? And he was like, well, no, but you can live a pretty good life for about 10 years and then you'll be more than likely in a wheelchair. And, you know, people ah. just have to help you with everything. Thank you. I was like, oh, my God, just kill me right now.
no, you know, is how I thought. I was like, well, that's not new, good news at all, <laughs> you know. So then I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? So I go. So then we get out of there. I tell my husband what, because he, my husband didn't go, well, my husband now was my boyfriend then, and he Aww. took me to my doctor's appointments. <laughs> so he, um, he was at the car waiting for me because he didn't go into the the room with me Aww. and so then he um yeah he didn't go into the room he was just in the lobby waiting for me so then he goes and gets a car and then i'm like hey they said that it was multiple sclerosis do you know what that is and then he's like yeah but that's a very serious uh diagnosis and they've already diagnosed you and then I'll, he's like that doesn't seem right to me and then i'm like yeah well I don't know that's what they said and I was so bad that the doctor the neurologist had ordered a nurse uh to go to my home a home you know the nurses I go to your home to give me an IV uh infusion excuse me it was um what is it um steroid a steroid intravenous uh yeah it was that bad I was that bad yeah, I'm telling you because my eye was my eye was already pitch black. I was already oh limping, God. and it was crazy. Yeah, and so, um, but I guess I had had the symptoms for some months now because I I started out and I didn't mention this because I didn't pay too much attention to it. But at the bottom of my heel, like the heel, my left side of my heel, um, it was numb. It was like pain. It was a little bit of pain, but not too much. So mm. it would go away. It would go away. And this was happening for like, I want to say like a month already, but I paid no mind to it because I was like, well, you know, it's nothing. And then I couldn't connect the two. I couldn't connect the eye and the foot. You know what I'm saying? But what I've learned along the way is that we're all connected. <laughs> we're all, yeah. all connected. You know, like, you know, it's but I didn't know. Right? So, so I didn't know, you know. And so then I was like, so I could, I was like, no, I don't think that has anything to do with the other, you know, one in the other. And so the neurologist was like, yeah, you know, it does. And so then I'm like, oh, okay. So, so the, the nurse goes that same day, my husband, well, my, my husband goes to my boyfriend at the time. He goes yeah, to work. He, <laughs> he, he works in the evening. So mm -hmm. at UPS at that moment, at the time, right? He's working at UPS, so he's, so this is already like 4 p.m. We've been all day at the doctors, like from one doctor to another. So then he, uh, he's like, I got to go to work. He's like, and I was like, okay, well, drop me off at my mom's. And, you know, at the time we lived in an apartment, me and my husband, we lived in an apartment, but we, uh, I was, I told the doctor, cause the doctor, even when he, he scared the shit out of me, like he, the doctor did, like, yeah. When he told me, he was like, well, a nurse is going to your house, to the house um, where, where you're going to be. He's like, where do you want them to go? And I'm like, well, I, I live in my apartment. So he's like, well, I don't know if you want to be there by yourself because it's going to take an hour. And I'm like, mm. oh, so then I was like, okay. And then so I sent them to my mom's house. And then wow. so I arrived first and then my my mom arrives after well my stepdad was already there but and i was like super worried i didn't know what was going on though i didn't even know how to explain it to them i just told them well they said i have multiple sclerosis i don't know what what to think or what to do but the nurse is coming and so they were like okay whatever they were just getting out of work they were getting out of work and so they weren't even home yet so my stepdad gets there when i get there we get there at the same time up to my mom's and then he's like everything's gonna be okay don't worry because he saw like the worry in my face right and he's like everything's gonna be okay don't worry and then my mom gets there and then right when my mom gets there the nurse gets there and so mm. she's like okay let's do it but my mom's really like she can hide her emotions very good <laughs> so she's just like okay you know just this you know it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay you know whatever my mom's telling me it's gonna be okay or whatever so then the nurse is getting ready and she's getting all the stuff ready and she's she's about to inject me and as as she was about to do the inject like the infusion my sister walks in and my sister she cannot hold her tears girl oh, and so God. I was trying to be strong at this point I hadn't cried yet I wanted to, but I hadn't cried yet. And so then, um, so then um, she gets there and she's like, she gets in the door, she gets to the table and she starts crying, like bawling. And I'm like, oh my God, because she sees the nurse like poking me, you know, a starting, gonna start to poke me. And so then 
um, I'm like, shit. So I break down. Like, I was like, oh, my God. And my mom's like, go to the room. Don't, she tells my, my sister, go to the room. Don't cry here. You know? Here. By that time, it was too late, girl. Yeah. And so then I started crying. Then the nurse couldn't find my vein because I was so nervous, shaking, Aww. cold by that time, girl. Yeah. And so then she injects me. And um, and then finally, by the ninth try, go, girl, the ninth Nine. try. Yeah, and it was at, right here, you know, like right here, my uh, uh, this oh, like the vein here, like yeah, yeah, on the yeah, it hurts so hand? bad. I don't know if you, oh. yeah, I don't know if you've ever gotten poked there, but it hurts so bad. No. And so then, <laughs> yeah, so then uh, she's like, I don't know where else to poke you, you know, and then she's like, everything else is failing, you know, like your veins are running, and so she's like, if I if I can't get it now, I'm gonna somebody's gonna have to come back tomorrow and start it oh. and I'm like oh my god right so then I breathe in and I try to calm down and she finally gets it after the ninth try she gets my vein in my hand <laughs> and so, right Ew. so that's so yeah that's my story and so ever since then it's like multiple sclerosis and after that I've had other tests because you know it was only an MRI that we had done that time mm -hmm. then the doctor calls me like a week or a week or two later and says yeah you know the results are back and yeah you know what I said was correct so then um so then that happens and that's it I have MS and I start trying to like not look into it like at all i'm so scared that i don't mm -hmm. look into it i don't even you know even talk about it look, yeah at all like you know what i'm saying i try not to i'm just like yeah i'm fine even though i'm not <laughs> you know what i'm saying like yes. i just i i try to ignore it like it just never happened but that didn't work out for me <laughs> so uh so every month i was having a relapse every month i was having oh. a relapse yeah and oh, so God. then yeah, but then shortly after that, not even a year after that, I got pregnant. It was not planned. Oh, ew. And then I, yeah. <laughs> and so then, <laughs> so then I found out I was pregnant. So then I'm like, well, then I was still clueless, you know, and I didn't know what to do. So, I, But I did call my neurologist and I was like, hey, I'm pregnant. I don't know what what's next. You know, I don't know what to do. And he's like, well, first get off of all your medication. And I'm like, but I thought mm -hmm. that something would happen if I'd get off of my medication because that's what they had said. So then I was like, okay, you know, fine. And then I was like, am I not going to have a relapse? He's like, well, hopefully you don't. When you're pregnant, it usually shields you from MS. And so I'm like, well, okay. I didn't know how that worked, but I didn't question it. I was just like, fine, <laughs> I'll get off the medication. And so I got off the medication nine months. And since it was so fresh, I thought after I had the baby, I was, I'm fine. I'm cured. I don't need to get on the medication no more. Worst decision of my life, girl. I had the worst relapse of my life after I had my baby. Like two months. So I had him in March and then May came and I was like, I couldn't even like really move. I was like partially paralyzed. Like that's how bad it was. I had to like use my other hand to really move my other leg. Like in oh. crazy. Yeah. And it was real crazy. So. Oh my God. I mean, I... Oh God! <laughs> Hold on, let's let's take a let's take a drink for that. Oh my God! Hold on. Mm. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Oh my goodness, Queen! Oh my God! <laughs> I can attest to the pregnancy thing because I don't know if this is a black thing, but they kept telling me that. I'm like, I'm trying not to get pregnant. 